good to see everybody here this morning. Glad you're with us. Uh, as I get into the announcements here, please remember your prayer requests. Ask that you fill those out and uh, drop them in the offering plate when it comes by, please. Uh, announcements. Any announcements this time? Ms. June? Um, the shoe boxes for the Appalachian are still right there. We do have plenty. We have a couple of weeks to do it. And also, prom dresses, slightly huge, and cups and blankets, the small blankets. And right after church, head to the fellowship hall. We have food, prizes, games, judges, desserts. We'll be judging the desserts. <laughs> okay. Thank you, June. Um, service today at 5 o'clock for uh, Pastor Dempsey's son, Mark. Uh, Van will be leaving the church here at 3 o'clock. If you'd like to go down with us for that service uh, today, we'll be leaving around 3 or at 3. And the baby bottles back there, please remember those. And um, let's see. Any other announcements at this time? Okay. Well, uh, if nothing else at this time, let's just take a couple minutes, hand of fellowship, and um, greet somebody this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning. Lord, uh, we just thank you for the wonderful day you give us, and we just thank you for all the blessings of life. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. There's been loss here with, within our members. We just ask you to touch each one of those families. We lift them up. Father, we pray your Holy Spirit down that it would move here this morning and that each person that has a part here today, uh, that it'll all be about lifting up your son Jesus and about the love that he had for each one of us. We thank you so much for all that you do. And Lord, we just uh, lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Glad to see you all here. Uh, for me, being up here, I really enjoy hearing all of your voices. Uh, it's actually, I know you're not singing to me, but I can hear your voices and it's a real blessing to me. I'm going to ask you to stand and let's sing 295, Near to the Heart of God.
today. I, uh, we come uh, celebrating those uh, with birthdays this week and, and anniversaries. Uh, Chris and Sandy and Ashley had a birthday. My bride has a birthday today, so uh, uh, we're uh, a lot of birthdays around. Yeah, I was looking in the uh, back of the calendar, a lot of, a lot of birthdays. I gave my bride, we had a little party for her yesterday, and some of the grand young'uns were by, and I uh, gave her a new uh, fishing rod and reel. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what she, that's what she likes to do, so might as well enjoy it, huh? It's been a joy for me to be here the last five months. I, uh, I told my wife on the way over, I'm going to miss doing this every week, so... Uh, Anyway, I uh, pray you'll be blessed uh, in the days ahead as you seek a pastor and in this intentional interim period, I pray God richly blesses each one of you. Uh, certainly we want to remember Brother Jackie Myers today and the loss of his sister yesterday. And uh, Sally, Sister Sally Miners in the hospital in Culpeper and Brother Bobby's got some Surgery coming up tomorrow. Yeah. So. And uh, Sister Donna's at home. Uh, talk to Brother Randy. Uh, continue to remember her and her, her recovery. And so a lot of, lot of uh, special burdens to pray about. And our uh, North American missionary today is a chaplain, uh, Ron and Marsha Harvell. And... Um, Chaplain serves with the United States Air Force. So we're praying for the Lord to create in the Air Force a culture of faith and hope in Christ. Pray also our ministry teams are filled with God's spirit and power as they serve glo globally. So if you uh, have time this week, remember uh, Pastor Har uh, Harvell in your prayers, Ron, uh, Chaplain. Um, that'd be a real blessing, I'm sure, to he and his family in the ministry he heads up. Uh, so. Anybody else have a special prayer request? Ann's father is fairly ill as well out in Minnesota. Let's uh, bow together. Awesome God, we... We enjoy being in the fellowship of Jeffersonton today. 
We thank you for each one that's gathered, Father God, and for those who uh, have been already and have heavy hearts. We pray that you would be ever close and present in their lives. We thank you, uh, Father, for the day you've given us. And I uh, pray it would be one that uh, would dr we would be drawn closer to the heart of God as we just uh, shared in song. I pray, Father God, that you would be uh, um, in each one's heart that is uh, facing difficult times, whether facing surgery or recovering from surgery or the loss of Brother Jackie and his uh, brothers and sisters and the loss of one sister and uh, Sister Margaret, his sister Margaret, and pray also for another sister who had a stroke yesterday. I pray you'd be with her as well. Be with Jackie and his family. Say, uh, go through this difficult time. Be with Pastor uh, Carl and, and uh, Linda, their uh, son Matthew and his wife, and the uh, two granddaughters, uh, the two daughters of uh, Brother Mark had passed away. I pray that you would be with those uh, precious teenage girls as they struggle right now uh, in the absence of having a, a dad in their life, uh, one that they seem to love and appreciate and, and work with and saw every day at the Christian school in Stafford. So I pray that you'd be ever close and present in their lives today. I pray you'd speak to each heart as we look at your word today and thank you for the songs that we sing today. May they draw us closer into your love and affection. Thank you again for this opportunity to uh, share together from God's word and just to be together as the body of Christ. May we be blessed and may you uh, uh, may someone's heart today be touched and drawn closer, I pray. To you, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Dwayne, come again. Another favorite I think most of you probably enjoy, Holy, 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 page two. We're going to sing the first, second, and the fourth verse. And on the fourth verse, we're just going to sing... With just our voices, no piano. And Judy's gonna help us out there.
Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come here in your house, Father. And we thank you for the freedom that we have to do that. And Father, we lift up all the ones that are defending that freedom today. And Father, we uh, also lift up the ones that are unable to be here today. For whatever the reason may be, Father, we just lift them in prayer to you. As we come to this special time of the service, Father, where we can give back to you just a small portion of what you so richly bless us with. We just pray, Father, that you uh, bless the gift and the giver that we give with a loving and a giving heart because we know that's where you want us to give. We pray all this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to do the impossible. There are three and a half chapters left in Romans. <laughs> but at least lunch is down the hill. So. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, we are going to pick up in chapter 13 where we finished last week at uh, verse 7, and we're going to pick up in verse 8. Now, I'm not going to read all those uh, three and a half chapters to begin with, but I will comment on a number of verses as we uh, march through together. And I want to present uh, Stephanie at the end and uh, have her and Kevin. Uh, Brandon's not here because of the passing of his aunt, but uh, we'll have them stand at the back there by the door. As you go out, you can uh, extend to them the right hand of Christian fellowship at the end. We didn't do that last week because they were soaking wet. <laughs> so uh, we'll do that today. Let me read a few verses beginning in verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. If there are any other commandments, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Do this knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. 
Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, not in strife and envy, but let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust. Join me as we uh, bow for a moment of prayer. Awesome God, I, as we are drawn around your word this morning, I pray that you might speak to our hearts. Father God, we uh, thank you for each one that's come. And I pray that uh, the words that uh, we hear from your word would penetrate deep into our heart. And not only would we be hearers today of the word, but we would be doers of the word. Thank you again for your awesome love for us. But you have so uh, marvelously shared with us through your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life that we might have life was willing to die on an old rugged cross to take my sin and the sin of this world that he might forgive us of our sin and cleanse us our heart. Thank you, Father, for the promises that we have in you. Now I pray, Father God, that uh, you would just, uh, your Holy Spirit right now would uh, bear witness with our spirit. And to those who are children of God, I pray your spirit would encourage and challenge and draw close to you. And to those who need to trust you as your Savior, their Savior, I pray they'd have that courage and boldness to do so. We pray these things in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, still uh, ringing in my ear from a few years back, I can hear my drill instructor, or sometimes I would say it after I got up a few, he would say, attention, forward. Well, that's my prayer. My prayer is you will march forward from this place. I pray. Uh, last week I, I did what I normally do when I go to a church field. I, I did what I uh, call a windshield survey. I drove within a four mile radius of this church. This place ought to be packed. This place ought to be packed with a number of homes that are around here. My gracious, what a mission field. We ought to be not sitting here in a fortress of four walls but we ought to be claiming the frontier for Christ. That's the mission. That's the goal. That's what is mentioned in our text this morning as well as we look together. So first of all, I want you to think about there are certain distinctives, unique distinctives as a child of God that we should follow as we see in, in uh, the latter part of chapter 13 there in verses 8 through 14. And then there are always unending differences that seem to separate us as Baptists. For whatever reason, uh, it seems always there are some kind of differences. As there was at the church in Rome, well, there was quite a combination there. They had some, uh, some uh, Jews there. They had Greeks there. And they had a few Gentiles there. So the church was made up with all different kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds, just like the church is today. We all have a, a little different, different understanding. But there should also be a devotion in our lives, a devotion to Christ and to His church. So I want us to think about these together uh, over the next little bit. Uh, first of all, there are unique distinctives 
that believers should practice, as we see. And uh, I'm going to use my training from the police academy for a moment. Uh, when I came along in Virginia, there was only one police academy, and there was a state police academy. So every uh, whether you were a, a city policeman like I was, or whether you were a uh, in a sheriff's department or whether you were going through state trooper school. Uh, they all met at the same place in Richmond. Uh, now they're uh, different entities, uh, different schools of, um, for different kinds of training. But uh, back then, that's been a couple of years ago uh, that I was in law enforcement. But we always ask some questions. And that's what I want to ask this morning. How, first of all, God shows us in verses 8 and 9, how we are to love. He sets forth His standard, if you will. He says, oh, no one anything but to love one another. And He shows us what we should avoid then. He shows us how we are to love. His standard is in verse 9. How do we love one another? We do not commit adultery. We do not murder. We do not steal. We do not bear false witness. I'm sure you heard about the lady that came forward one Sunday morning and she told a preacher, she said, I want to lay my tongue on the altar. He said, dear, it isn't long enough. Oh, you'll get that later. Maybe you'll never get it. And it's all right. But sometimes we bear false witness when we shouldn't bear false witness. Huh? Sometimes our... Our tongue says way more than the fact. You shall not covet. And there is, uh, if there is any other, it's summed up in that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So he tells us not only how we are to love, but he tells us who we are to love. Now, who is your neighbor? Is your neighbor the one that lives next door? Well, Jesus would define a neighbor quite different, wouldn't he? In the parable of what we call the Good Samaritan, uh, we see that uh, Jesus says a neighbor is anyone who has need. It's not just the one who lives next door. The one who has need might live in a far off country or they might be your next door neighbor. It's anyone who has a need. So our neighbor, it's kind of the question I asked a few weeks back when we were uh, in Romans a little earlier. Whoa, there, Charlie Brown. So who is your one? Uh, I asked that right in the center of your bullseye. Who is that one person that you're praying for this year? Remember I uh, asked that one Sunday, I passed all of you out a little card at who's my, who's my one? Who am, I, who am I searching for this year that I could see come to know Jesus Christ as a Savior? And uh, maybe you've already seen that. Maybe your number one's already come to faith. I remember at the door when one of our uh, precious little ladies walked out, she said, do I just have to have one? Because I got a whole list that I'd like to see come to know Christ. No, you don't have to have one, but sometimes we think of so many folks that we forget the one we need to bring and see come to know faith, to faith in Christ. So who's your one? Who is your neighbor? Who has the greatest need that you know? And then not only how we're to love and who we're to love, but why? In verses 11 through 14, Christ tells us why we are to love. And first of all, He says we are to cast off. Notice that. He tells us to cast off certain things here in verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So he talks about, uh, in verse 13, about five more things that we should cast off. We've already read a about several in verse 9. Commands of the Lord. But now he tells us 
Uh, five more things we're to cast off so we can walk properly as in the day. So he tells us what, what we're to do. Um, you get uh, you look back at verse 11 and you see these things as they come about in verse 14. He says, uh, put on the Lord Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its desire. The armor of light. Uh, I'm sure you uh, put on the armor every morning when you get up. I hope you do as a child of God. Ephesians 6 says we're to put on the armor of God so we do not... Um, I actually put on the armor this morning. I don't know if I want to open up my t-shirt or not. But uh, I told my wife I don't know why I put on a t-shirt as warm natured as I am. But I put on the armor of God this morning. If you don't believe it, so I'm going to show you. See the armor of God right there. Well, the armor of God right there. All right. Just uh, don't lose that. That's my tie clasp that I got in 1966. I can't lose that. All right. So we are to cast off certain things. He, and he lists those things. Uh, in verse uh, 13, he tells us, cast off uh, revelry and drunkenness and lewdness and lust and strife and envy and put on the Lord Jesus. Back in verse 12, he says, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, if you haven't read Ephesians 6 about what that armor is recently, you ought to go back and see. Uh, he talks about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So you ought to think about what God wants you to put on as the armor each and every day. Now, there are some unending differences that believers often argue over. In chapter 14, we see that because of this large group of people that were coming to faith in Christ now, there were Jews coming, there were Greeks coming, there were Gentiles coming, and they had all these different kinds of ideas. So believers uh, back then would argue over their diet. Uh, that's a four-letter word, but by the way. But they would uh, argue over their uh, dietary concerns. They would argue over uh, uh, whether you should eat uh, prime rib or whether you should be uh, uh, eating Vegemite. And that's what it says here in verse 2. For one believes he may eat all things, but another believes he should... Um, he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let, him, let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. So it's not so much about your dietary desires. Now the older you get, you might have some uh, challenges from your doctor that have something to do with your dietary concerns. Uh, but uh, as far as the body of Christ, it didn't matter whether a person, and the struggle was for a Jew who had come to faith in Christ, their struggle was, uh, suppose I go to the market and I find that meat had been offered to an idol worship. So that was their struggle. And they didn't think that a Gentile or a Greek should eat that meat. It didn't bother a Gentile or a Greek but it certainly did bother the Jews if that meat had been offered already at an idol worship. So that was the struggle that was going on in this church. I, don't, I doubt if we have too many uh, dietary arguments in this church. Matter of fact, uh, I think we have uh, plenty of meals uh, to, uh, to uh, in uh, my short few months here. Seems like about every other month we have some, some reason to get together and eat. So I don't think you're going to be struggling with dietary concerns. But other believers had a struggle over which day they should worship. That's true even in the 21st century. We have some Baptists who worship on Saturday, Seventh-day Baptists. They still believe that that day is 
um, not on the day Christ rose from the dead on the first day of the week, but and uh, the last time I looked, I don't know how many variety of Baptists there are today. The last time I looked, there were about 29 different varieties of Baptists alone. I have to tell you a cute one. When I went to uh, when I went to uh, Woodstock, uh, was my first uh, church out of Bible College. I pastored uh, two churches, one in Bible College and one before I went to Bible College. But my first church after Bible College, I was over in Shenandoah County. And I always had a practice to knock on every door in town. So I knocked on this one door and I said, uh, uh, Good afternoon, I'm Pastor Bowman. I'm the new pastor out here at the Baptist Church. And the fellow said, Well, that's, uh, that's nice to meet you, Pastor. But he said, There are two things that don't grow in Shenandoah County. I said, well, what would that be? He said, sweet potatoes and Baptists. <laughs> sweet potatoes and Baptists. Well, there were 116 Lutheran churches at the present time in Shenandoah County. Well, at that time, I don't know how many there are today. Most of them were very small community churches. Of course, it was predominantly German settled down the valley there, but uh, I always found that interesting. So I told him, I, then I asked, I said, can I pray for you? He said, uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that a Baptist, uh, I'd want a Baptist prayer. Okay. I'm, I'm gone. Thank you. I want a Baptist prayer. I hope it's not a Baptist prayer anyway. But anyway, anyway, so there was a struggle over which day of the week to worship. Some worship still on the Sabbath. The Jews thought the Sabbath, but the new believers wanted to uh, share on the first day of the week, kind of like uh, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16 says we should bring our offering on the first day of the week. So, uh, uh, many places in the New Testament after the resurrection it talks about them worshiping on the Lord's day or the first day of the week but it was uh, the day shouldn't matter the diet shouldn't matter it should be all about our devotion to Christ our Lord as uh, we look in chapter 14 look at verse 7 then it says for none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. That's a good promise. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lives again, that he might be Lord, Lord both of the dead and of the living. So it's not so much about uh, uh, the day or, or your diet, but it's about our devotion to Christ. There are a couple of verses I want to point out to you. Again, he says, avoid causing someone to stumble. Look at verse 13. So I said, I'm not going to read them all, but uh, you can do that. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block, or a cause to fall in our brother's way. In our, uh, in our brother or sister's path, don't, don't put something so we're to avoid putting a stumbling block out for someone else to trip on. And then he tells us what to add down in verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So he said, if you focus on what I want you to focus on, which is righteous living, I want you to have joy in your heart. I want you to focus on peace between yourself. And he said, if you focus on these, you're not going to be putting a stumbling block in your brother's way. Notice verse 18, it says, for he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. 
Well, I really wanted to get to point three. And, oh, my, what's wrong with that clock? I need to unplug it. There should be an unparalleled devotion to Christ in one's church family. Chapter 15, 1 through the end of the book, which is 1627. So we must be a people of humility. It says in the opening verses here of chapter 15. Um, note verse 3, it says, For Christ, even Christ did not please Himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me, Christ said. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may be with one mind and one mouth, that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he calls us to be a people of humility, but he also calls us to be a people who glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. He says with one mind and one mouth, we should lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving to God. So we should glorify God. Uh, first of all, for His promises, as we see there in verses 6 and 7. I read 6 already, that you be of one mind, one mouth, to glorify the God and Father. And then verse 7, therefore receive one another, that just as Christ has received you to the glory of God. So we should focus on glorifying the Lord for His promises to us. But also, we should glorify our Lord for His power in our life. Look at verse 19. In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem down to, or up, from Jerusalem up to uh, modern day Albania, if you will, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, I was uh, told my wife yesterday, I was looking at the four missionary journeys of Paul. This last missionary journey, I'm going to give you a history lesson now. But he went from uh, Jerusalem. Oh, uh, by the way, this is the area that God gave to the children of Israel when he gave it to Abraham from the great river of the Euphrates all the way over to the, the great river of Egypt, the Nile. So uh, I don't know why uh, the president hadn't got on board with God's plan for what belongs to him. Part of Saudi Arabia, most of Syria, uh, uh, all of Jordan. Uh, he said, yeah, but it says he went from uh, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem somewhere around there, uh, from Jerusalem all the way up here to Albania. And he went by land most of the way. There would have been a few uh, few uh, short uh, trips. But that, uh, that second missionary journey went about uh, 2,800 miles. Most of it on foot. When you look at the four missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul, he walked about 9,200 miles miles. I'd say he's a pretty wiry little guy sharing a good news, wouldn't you? Probably, I picture him, he's probably about the size of Ray there. It's wiry and strong. <laughs> you could have sat with your wife, you know. Oh, the boys were there. Okay, I'll give you a break this time. But the boys aren't there now. Oh. So, the Apostle Paul challenges us. He said, uh, we should glorify the Lord for the power that is in us. In mighty signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about, it was round about, all right, the way he had to go to get there. 
all the way up to uh, auriculum, I guess that's how you say it. I'll just say Al Albania. It's easier to say for me. Have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And I have made it my aim to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest somebody else might think I was building on their foundation. But he was empowered to go. When I look at your mission field, when I look at the four mile uh, radius around this church, I say, oh, that we could glorify God by depending on his power like the Apostle Paul depended on the power of God. Third, we should glorify our Lord for his plans for us. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. When, it, when I think about plans, he said, I have plans for you, good plans for you, not evil, a plans for your future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. But here we see he has plans, plans for the mission of the apostles, plans for your mission and mine. Note verse 25, but now I am going to Jerusalem to serve the saints. He said, I'm going over there to serve those who have already come to know Jesus Christ as his Savior. Sometimes, and most of your, all of your uh, windows are uh, pictures related to the life of Christ. But a lot of churches uh, that I've been in, they have a saint. Saint Paul or Saint somebody or Saint somebody else. I went in this, uh, I thought it was, uh, it had uh, uh, something about uh, Christ is King. Bookstore in Fredericksburg. It's the only bookstore left in Fredericksburg. But when I got inside, all they had were uh, Saint this and Saint that and Saint something else. And it wasn't quite what I was looking for. Anyway, uh, the Bible says every child of God is a saint. You're a saint. Uh, I, I am some days. Some days I don't act like it probably. But uh, uh, we're all blood-washed children of the King of Kings. And he says, I am going there. I'm going back to Jerusalem. He left from Jerusalem. Went all the way up on this journey to Al as far north as Albania, made his way back. But he said, now I'm going back to Jerusalem and I'm going to serve the saints. Wow. So what is your mission? That's what I want to talk about now. We should glorify God for our partnership in the gospel. I don't know how, how if you've read chapter 16 or not lately of the book of Romans. But the apostle here under the inspiration of God's Spirit talks about 38 different folks that he shared ministry with. 38 different folks in chapter 16. Uh, 38 individuals that had a great impact on his life for sharing the gospel. So we're all engaged in a partnership. That's what a church is. We're in a partnership with one another uh, to, to grow in Christ, yeah, but also in a partnership to go. To grow, but to go. That's the, the role of Sunday school. And I like to challenge deacons that are here. Every deacon ought to be in Sunday school because it's the outreach tool of the church. If we don't have our, our church leaders in Sunday school, it's hard to grow a church. So he says we are to, um, first of all, in verses 1 through 7 of chapter 16, he said we are gifted to serve. So the question is, will we serve? But that's why he has gifted us. Note verse 1, he, he starts right off. I commend to you Phoebe, my sister, who is a servant of the church. I, uh, verse 3, I greet uh, Priscilla and her husband Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches 
of the Gentiles. Really all the churches in Asia should give thanks to this couple. So he says we have a partnership. We are gifted. Uh, Brother Darrell a few weeks ago, and then for a couple Sundays I, I, I preached on the gifts. Everybody has a, a gift of the Spirit. Maybe you have the gift of giving or teaching or exhorting or showing mercy or whatever your gift might be. We all have a gift. God doesn't expect us to sit on our gift. He expects us to use it for His glory. That's where you're supposed to say amen. Amen. Now, Pastor Carlin isn't going to let you off. I can tell you, he's going to want you to be doing a lot of amen. And he'll tell you when to amen. All right. And 17 through 20, he said, not only are we gifted to serve, but he said, we need to guard what we believe. I urge you, brethren, verse 17, note those who cause division and offense in the church, contrary to the doctrine you have learned, and avoid them. When they knock on your door, avoid them. Pastor Carlin says when the Jehovah's Witness knock on his door, he sends them down to my house. <laughs> nice, nice neighbor. <laughs> Nice neighbor. Guard your doctrine seriously. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words, flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. I'm going to give to Stephanie and Brandon when I see him. This little booklet's called The Baptist Faith and Message. Every church member ought to have a copy, Brother Randy. They uh, might cost you uh, this one about 20 cents apiece. But it has uh, the major illustrative of the doctrines we believe. There are about 18 different uh, thoughts in here with hundreds and hundreds of verses of Scripture of why we believe them. Or 18, he even talks about the family, the church, the purpose of God's grace. Um, but every believer, so we know what we believe when somebody knocks on our door with something that seems contrary to what we believe. It's important we know what we believe. There's a good study on that little track, or you might not even need a good study, just the Holy Spirit in that little track to God a midweek service. And then he says, not only guard the doctrine seriously, but he said in verses 21 through 27, glorify God, you saints. Glorify God, you saints. He says, Timothy, this is a 31th, a number 31 of the folks listed there. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius and Jason, he goes on. Uh, verse 23, Gaius, my host and the host of the whole church. He even in verse 22 tells who, who penned the book for him. As he spoke the words, he had a scribe writing down the epistle of the book of Romans. And then he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 24. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And then he does the benediction, which is very similar to most every book he writes. Now to him who is able to establish you according to the gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the beginning of the world, but now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. Think about it. Think about all the uh, all the places in the four missionary journeys that the apostle went and how it spread. But he went all across Asia preaching the gospel, uh, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. All across Asia preaching the word. It says that in uh, one of those verses we uh, probably skipped over, but it says uh, that he... Uh, 
something about Achaia, which is really the, the entrance door to Asia. Uh, but anyway, he says, glorify God. But now, through the prophetic scripture made known to all nations. And then I love verse 27. To God alone, wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Join me for a moment. Father God, we have uh, thought together pretty hurriedly, uh, looked at uh, probably way too much information, probably uh, uh, each point could have been divided out upon a week uh, more to study and get the real meat out of it. We've just kind of taken a survey. Father God, there are uh, hearts in here that are fully aware of the struggle of the daily Christian walk. And I just pray, Father God, should be with each one today. To those who need to uh, make that initial trust in you, I pray they'd do that. Those who need to ask you to take away that nature, that sinful nature we're all born with. Not only are we sinners by nature, Father God, but we're also sinners by choice. The Bible says if we know to do right and we choose not to do it, it's a sin. And so, Father God, we, uh, we can't blame our sin just on Adam because we make the choice. And if there are one here or more that need to trust you, I pray they do that today. That'd be the greatest going away present I could, any pastor could have. And Father God, I pray also for the Christians, the saints. And I pray we would not sit here in, a, in the fortress. But I pray, Father God, we'd lift, lift up our eyes as... As Jesus challenged us, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already, uh, they are ready already for harvest. They're white, probably past time. Homes everywhere around this, on the frontier. Help us not to sit in the fortress, but help us to lift up our eyes. And you tell us in that same scripture, Lord, to pray for laborers. Pray for those willing to go to the harvest. And I pray for the leadership here, Lord. An intentional interim will not make a great impact without leadership walking alongside. Leadership getting fired up in the Holy Spirit and, and working together to see this place, not a fortress on a hill, but a light on a hill. Takes me back to Christmas Eve when we all stood out on the porch with little candles of flickering and thought about sharing that light on a hill from a hill. Give us that gumption. Give us that drive. Empower us, Father God, with your Holy Spirit. Now, Father God, if there's a decision that needs to be made today, I just pray you would be bold upon this people to make those decisions today. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Brother Dwayne, you want to come lead us? Sister Judy, would you play for us? Thank you, Mr. Palmer, for another challenging version of the Bible. Softly and tenderly, page 312. You can sing all four verses.
Stephanie, would you come stand by me just one minute? Uh, Stephanie Groot uh, came several, a uh, couple or three months back now, too long ago before we got to baptize her, and uh, gave her life to Christ and uh, followed through last Sunday in baptism. And I'd like to present her as a church if you're would like to receive her into our church family, would you say amen? Amen. amen. Those opposed, amen. <laughs> God bless you. Welcome. And we'll, uh, I want you to have that. And uh, we'll do Brandon, uh, Brother Randy, y'all make sure you do Brandon when he's here. And Kevin, would you come down and stand with right here at the back? Kevin came as well last week uh, on a, renew, a renewal of his faith and revival in his heart and wanted to be baptized. We did that. So if you'd stand at the back there and Stephanie um, or the front. It's a front door but it's a back. And <laughs> too much for my peanut mind. I uh, remember uh, Brother Bobby tomorrow and uh, the doctor and his precious wife. Awesome God that you are. We uh, thank, thank you for the day. Uh, I've enjoyed, I've loved coming over here. Love the people. I enjoyed it 10 years ago. I enjoyed it this time, Lord. I, I guess you say you enjoy it. I hope people enjoy coming to the house of the Lord. I enjoy opening the word every time I get a chance. I pray we have grown, Father. I pray most of all we have grown to love each other again. And there would uh, not be a division again that would uh, separate this body, save if it was something doctrinal. But I pray we're ready to march forward, Lord. I pray we're ready to claim a growing together as the body of Christ here and reaching our mission field for you. You've charged us. You have commanded us to make disciples. You didn't say, I want you to go and make disciples if you feel like it. You said, as you are going, therefore, make disciples. As you go to the grocery store, the gas station, or the country club, or wherever you go, make disciples. Father God, that's a powerful command. May we be obedient to do what you've commanded us to do. Be with us now. Help us to enjoy our lunch. We pray you'd bless the food to our body. We pray we'd be strengthened by it. We pray we would enjoy the fellowship around the table. Thank you again for your awesome love for us. Pray that you'd be with Mr. Bobby tomorrow. Well, be with the doctor, I pray. Guard his uh, uh, mind and guide his hands. I pray from Sister Bobby that you would be with her. Just give her, a, uh, Sister Barbara, a peace about what's going on. And, and I pray for a good recovery from my brother. Thank you, Lord, for your awesome love. Go with us now. Help us enjoy our uh, fellowship together around the tables. We pray in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.